Hello, Math 8 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to be teaching you Chapter 5, Lesson 1, which is about solving systems of linear equations by graphing. Please have open your spiral notebook open to a nice clean page and write this at the top of your page. You will also need your RPJ today open up to page 104. A system of linear equations is a set of two, or you could have more, but we're only going to be dealing with two in this class, but two or more linear equations that are grouped together as part of a group. And so what you would do is you would see them on the same graph. A solution of the system of linear equations is a point. And remember, a point is always written with parentheses and then the x number and the y number where the two lines intersect on a graph. Please pause the video now and get caught up with your notes and also go ahead and draw a graph and write these two linear equations. So if this is a set of linear equations or a system of linear equations, so we have one that says y equals x and another one that says y equals 1 half x minus 3. So this is called a system of linear equations because it is a set of two or more that are uh, grouped together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to graph each of these. And I'm going to graph them in different colors. So for the first one, I notice that I have um, an invisible plus 0 here. So remember that means that the y-intercept is equal to 0. So if I graph the y-intercept of 0, I put it right at the origin. The, um, slope is an invisible one, so that means my slope is going to be up one over one. So remember that is going to be a perfect diagonal slope, and I'm just going to uh, draw it several times. I might have to keep going, I'm not sure, but this is as far as I'm going to go right now, and I might have to go back and add more uh, points later on. So uh, let's take a look at our next one. So our next one has a y-intercept of negative 3. So we're going to go down to negative 3 and put a point. And now we're going to take out our slope. So our slope is going to be 1 half. So I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and I'm going to do that a few times in both directions. Now my hope is to find out where do these two intersect. And um, I didn't quite draw enough on the first line. So on the first line, I could continue going just a little bit more. I'm going to erase this little uh, arrow there. And I'm going to continue going a little bit because I notice that they do actually intersect right there. That is a point that they are sharing by both the uh, y equals x graph, which is the red graph, and also the y equals 1 half x minus 3 graph, which is the blue graph. So they are sharing this point. This is where they intersect. That means that this point is my solution of this system of linear equations. So now when we write our solution, we have to make sure to write it as an x, y point. So if I look at this graph and see what is that point, so we look and see what's going to the left 6, so it's negative 6, and then it's going down 6, which is also happens to be negative 6. So then that means that my solution is going to be negative 6, comma, negative 6. And that is my answer for this system of linear equations. Please have out your RPJs. Turn to page 104. For this uh, video, we're going to skip number one, but we might come back to that in uh, class time. Let's take a look at number two. So we're going to go ahead and graph this first one, which is y equals 3x plus 1. So remember, the, that means that the y-intercept is at positive 1. So I'm going to put a point here at positive 1. And my slope is 3. So that means that it's 3 over 1. So we're going to count up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, and put a point. I'm going to also go down in the other direction as well, and I'll see if I need more. I'm just going to go ahead and connect those. All right, let's go ahead and do the second one. So the second one is y equals negative 2x minus 4. So my y-intercept 
is going to be negative 4. So I go down 1, 2, 3 at the negative 4. And now we have a slope of negative 2, which is the same as negative 2 over 1. So we go down 2 and over 1. And obviously, uh, that's going off the graph a little bit. So I do need to go the other direction. Oh, look at that. I already found where they intersect. Notice that I can see that they share this point here. So my answer is wherever that point is. So I'm going to write my answer. And we're going to see if we can figure out where it is. So we start at the origin. It's left 1. So that would be negative 1. And then we're going down 2. So it'll be minus or negative 2. So our answer is negative 1 comma negative 2. Let's take a look at number 3. So here is my equation. y equals negative 4x plus 1. So my y-intercept is at positive 1. So I'm going to go here. And now we have a slope of negative 4 and over 1. So we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. So we'll put a point there. And I don't really have, I could go up and a little bit off the graph. I don't know if that's uh, far enough, but we'll go ahead and check it out when we do the other equation. So the other equation is y equals 5x minus 8. So my y-intercept is at negative 8. I notice that I only go down 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my graph a little bit to help me out. So here's negative 5, here's negative 6, here's negative 7, and way down here is negative 8. All right, that's okay. We'll go ahead and put our point there. So now we need to count our slope. So our slope is 5, which remember means 5 over 1. So way down here is where I start, and I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. Look at that. They share that point right there. So this is the point that we share. I'm going to keep going uh, just for the sake of completion. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, and put another point here. And there we have our second line. So now I notice that we do have an answer. That answer is right here. I know that my first line I didn't really do a good job with graphing this um, uh, graphing this blue line. It really should have been more closer to there, so it went through that point there. Sorry about that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write our answer. So we have, um, we start at the origin, we go 1 to the right, so that's going to be a positive 1, and now we're counting down 1, 2, 3 down, so that'll be a negative 3, and this is our answer for number 3. For numbers 4 and 5, it says to use a graphing calculator, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to use a graph. Unfortunately, they don't give us graph paper for this, and so what I need for you to do is pull out a piece of scratch graph paper and uh, do number 4 with me. So let's take a look at number 4. Um, we have our first equation here, which is y equals negative, or sorry, y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. So we have a y intercept of positive 2, and then we have a slope of 2 thirds. So I need to go ahead and draw my x and y coordinates. When you draw your x and y coordinates, it's really important to draw nice straight lines. If you don't, it'll really mess you up. So if you draw crooked lines, you're going to need to pull out an eraser and redraw them. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. I have a y-intercept of positive 2. So I'm going to go here and put a little 2 there. And now we have a slope of 2 thirds. So we're going to count up 2 and over 3. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a few points in here. And I don't know how many I'll need, but we'll go ahead and start with that. We might need to add more later on. OK, let's go ahead and do the next one. We have um, x minus y equals 4. So if I think about this, x minus y is equal to 4. I notice that it's not in nice uh, standard form, right? It's not what we're used to, which is y equals mx plus b. So whenever you have something that's not quite in y equals mx plus b, you have to get y by itself. 
So I'm going to draw my line and circle the, y, the variable that I want to have by itself, which is my y. So the first thing I need to do is move the x to the other side. And so how I do that is I subtract x from both sides. So then I'm left with negative y is equal to. Now you'll notice that these two are not like terms, so we need to keep them separate. So negative x gets written first and then plus 4. Now I'm not quite done. I still want to get y by itself. So that means that I have an invisible 1 here. So if I divide out of an invisible 1 on all three parts, then I end up with y is on the left, and then I have a negative over negative, so that's going to turn to positive x, and then I have a 4 over negative 1, which changes to minus 4. So if I were to graph this then, my y-intercept is at negative 4, so we'll go down 1, 2, 3, 4 is here, and then we have a slope, which is up 1 over 1. So it's going to be my perfect diagonal slope. Now I'm noticing that these lines are not parallel, but boy, they're really close to parallel, aren't they? But they are eventually going to start to come together. If I keep going, I've got to keep going until I see a connection. So I think that's far enough for my blue line. Now let's continue the red line out a little bit. So we're going up 2 over 3. So up 2 over 3 is here. We're almost there. Ah, there they are. There's the point that they intersect. So I did have to continue out quite a ways. All right, so this is the point of intersection. So now I need to count over how far it is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I keep counting out, it's going to end up being at up away out at 18. So this is actually out at positive 18. And then if I keep counting up here, this ends up being up at 14. So that means that my answer is 18, 14. When you write an ordered pair, it's very important. Remember that you've got to put parentheses around it to show that it is an ordered pair. Okay, one more practice problem, and that's going to be on number five. So I have y is equal to x minus 7. So my y-intercept is at negative 7. So I'm going to go down here to negative 7. I'm going to put a point. And my slope is at positive 1. So I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And I don't know how much I need, but I'll go ahead and do a few. And I may need to add more later on. Let's go ahead and take, it th take a look at the next um, equation, which is y plus x is equal to 3. So this one, you'll notice I, st I don't have y by itself again. So I need to draw my line and circle my variable, and I need to move the x to the other side. So how we're going to do that is we're going to subtract it off. Now, when we do that, we're left with the y, and then notice that these are not like terms, so we have to keep them separate. I'm going to write my x first. Notice that there is a negative with the x, so I've got to put a negative here, and then plus 3 because 3 is positive. So that is my equation now, y is equal to negative x plus 3. So now I have it in the right form, so I can go ahead and graph it. So my y-intercept is at positive 3, so I'll go up here and put a positive 3 up on the graph, and my slope is negative 1. So that means a perfect negative slope, um, a perfect diagonal in the negative direction. Oh, I found where they intersect. Good, I didn't need to continue it too far. So my blue line does like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue my red line just a little bit. My red line goes like so. And now I can find my answer. My answer is here. That's where they intersect. So let's see where that point is. If I count over here, I notice that it's at a positive 5, so I'll put a 5 there. And if I count down from here, it goes down to negative 2, so negative 2. So 5 comma negative 2 is the answer for this system of linear equations. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.